to glean more information about cancers that may come in between. Happy, healthy dogs and cats. Hi everyone, I'm Mikey, and today I'm going to meow about something you may not expect. It's common knowledge that humans can contract a bunch of illnesses and diseases, so that's why we take precautions to maintain our health and have routine doctor's visits. However, did you know that animals like dogs and cats can also suffer from these illnesses? Many pet owners don't know this fact, so it's hard for them to spot serious diseases in their furry friends. Today I'll be discussing two diseases, leukemia and lymphoma, and the different common variations. I'll teach you what these diseases are, what to look for, and how to prevent them so you can treat your pets like family. Before we get started on some of the more specific stuff, let's talk about the basics. There are a few terms you'll need to know in order to understand the topics we're discussing, so let's jump right in. The first term we're covering is blood cells. Blood cells are little cells that make up the composition of our blood and perform many different tasks for our bodies. The most common types of blood cells are white blood cells, or leukocytes, platelets, and red blood cells, also called erythrocytes. These cells all work together in our body in a system called the lymphatic system, which is a network of tissues and organs that help keep the organism clean of any toxins viruses, bacteria, and other unwanted substances. The condition of this system and your blood cells can be checked with a test called a blood smear, which is done to check for any abnormalities occurring in the lymphatic system. A normal blood smear of a healthy furry friend would have a majority of red blood cells, a handful of white blood cells, and some platelets. However, the number of these cells can vary, and that may or may not point to signs of a blood disease. Term one out of the way, on to our second and final term, lymphomas. While the lymphatic system and all of its components work with our blood, lymphomas develop in lymphoid tissues outside of the bone marrow. The severity of lymphomas depends on how large they are and where in the bone marrow they're located, but we'll talk more about that later. For now, you're all caught up on the basics. Now that you've got an understanding of these key terms, it's time to move on to the heavier stuff. Leukemia. Although leukemia in pets is rare, it is important to be aware of these conditions as being knowledgeable about these diseases can save your pet's life. There are four main types of leukemia, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, acute myelogenous leukemia, AML, and chronic myelogenous leukemia, CML. Both ALL and AML are illnesses that can occur all of a sudden and last a short while. However, CLL and CML are more serious illnesses and can worsen over time. Some symptoms to look out for are fever, diarrhea, nausea, sneezing, and runny nose. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia starts in the bone marrow. From there, ALL can progress and move on to lymph nodes and other lymphatic organs. The neoplastic cells can be of T cell, T A L L, or B cell, B A L L, origin. The average survival time for animals after being diagnosed with ALL is less than four months. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia originates in the bone marrow, or spleen. It is similar to ALL, however, it has more serious complications and long-term effects. As for what causes leukemia in pets, the only factors that have been identified are feline leukemia virus, FELV, and feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV, in cats. Dogs that are affected with acute leukemia tend to be younger, and those with chronic leukemia tend to be older. These viruses infect domestic cats all around the world and are responsible for the majority of deaths in the female population. More than 50% of cats who are infected die within three years after being infected. However, 72% of cats in a multi-cat household can fight off the virus and 97% in a single cat household. They're naturally occurring and are contagious to other cats around the infected cat. It can be transmitted through saliva, blood, milk, urine, feces, and nasal secretions. There are two ways to diagnose this virus. One being an ELISA test, which detects the presence of the FELV particles in the blood, and the other being an IFA test, which detects the presence of the virus in white blood cells. Depending on the severity, one test may be preferred over the other. Lymphoma. You may ask yourself, what is lymphoma? Well, lymphoma is a cancer of the lymph nodes and lymphatic system and is developed in lymphoid tissues outside of bone marrow. The most common sign may be swollen lymph nodes. The lymph nodes located in the neck, chest, armpits, groin, and behind the knees are often the most visible and easy to observe. Although there are many types of lymphoma, 85% of dogs' lymphoma is one of these four. Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, 50%, peripheral T-cell lymphoma, 15%, T-zone lymphoma, 5-10%, to and T-lymphoblastic lymphoma, 4%. Of those four, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, DLBCL, is the most common in dogs. 
It is easily diagnosable, however, some other immature large cell lymphomas have an almost identical specimen. The survival time for dogs who have DLBCL is usually less than one year. In order to be 100% sure, a distinction between immunophenotyping, cytology, and histologic sampling is required. In most cases, DLBCL is associated with cats who are infected with FELV. However, enteric lymphoma is the most common lymphoma in cats. Well guys, there you have it! That is pretty much all you need to know to keep your furry friends safe. Remember, just because you didn't know all this before doesn't mean you're a bad pet owner. Not a lot of pet owners know about these kinds of things, so you're already on your way to treating your pets like family. Thanks so much for watching, and stay furry!